The Warhammer Day reveal is supposed to be one of the bigger reveals for Warhammer for the entire year. It's really there to set up what's coming in the next year and get us excited for all the new models and narratives. And I feel like this one was both disappointing and surprising in a good way, so we'll definitely talk about that. But there's also pre-orders and a little painting competition known as Golden Demon to cover, so let's not waste any more time. I'm Hoodguard, and this is your Monday Warhammer wrap-up. Let's get into it. The Emperor's light is my torch! Death to the enemy! We shall be the end of you! We will the might of the Alright, here's a breakdown of the video if you want to jump around. We're going to talk Saturday pre-orders first, then we're going to talk the new Death Watch animation, then is going to be Warhammer Day reveals, ending out with Golden Demon. So this past week we only had one book up for pre-order for Warhammer 40k, and that was Eidolon the Auric Hammer. But at this point I've stopped expecting to see things that I saw in the February Black Library reveal and just go along with the surprises. First up, for my Commissar fans, they are doing another reprint of the print-on-demand Caiaphas Kane books. The first four books in the Caiaphas Kane series will be available with special print-on-demand covers and will be available to pre-order for as long as the window is there. No word on how long it'll be up, but these things have ranged from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. There's also another mega limited edition coming out. This will be featuring the book Inceptor City by Dan Abnett. Now, I've never personally read this book, but I have been talking about for a while about how I want more Aeronautica Imperialis and fighter pilot stories. The Mega Limited Edition will come in a nice presentation box. It'll come with a flight pin, a flight patch, and a map of the setting. The Inceptor City book has a nice screen printed cover and will be signed by Dan Abnett himself. The whole set comes with a 64-page insetting manual called Pilot's Notes for Avenger Strike Fighter. It's essentially a pilot's log that follows the events of the book. No word yet on when this will be out, but knowing Games Workshop, it's going to be in the next month and a half or so. Now, if you've ever watched any of my videos where I'm citing something specifically about a Legion, odds are I used this book. This is a big old lore book that tells you all about the first founding Loyalist chapters of Space Marines. Well, if you missed out when this was first released, they are coming out with a deluxe edition of First Founding. It also will come in a beautiful presentation box. It'll have a nice blue leather cover. It also comes with nine art prints and nine coins that represent each First Founding chapter. I absolutely love lore guides to really extensive stories, so this has been invaluable for me. And if you're just as much of a lore head or really just enjoy Space Marines like that, I would suggest trying to pick this up. Now, usually when there's a release like this, they have a specific amount of books that they sell. And it's generally around 1700, 1750. But this isn't a signed book and there's no stock number on the website, so I'm not sure how limited this is going to be. Just make sure you're at a store or in the queue early Saturday if you want this. That's the end of the Saturday preview. Let's go ahead and move on to our new animation. Randomly, without any warning, because I don't really look at leaks or anything, they dropped a new Death Watch animation on Warhammer TV. That's free for everyone to watch. It's only a vignette, it's about four to five minutes, and it's called The Enemy Without. I'm not gonna do a review on this because there's not a lot of story, it's really just Space Marines fighting Necrons, but I would check it out if I were you. I might have some personal lore complaints about how lore accurate they made the Scorpec Lord, but other than that, I thought it was really cool. This was done in association with Bandai Namco, and they're also putting out some chibi dolls that are Warhammer 40k themed. And what I feel all of this culminating into is the mass commercialization of Warhammer 40k. It has always been very, very niche, but it has seen a rise in popularity over the past few years. With that popularity comes a lot of growing pains, and I think what they're trying to do now is see how marketable these smaller toys and less expensive toys for Warhammer are. But if we're also getting really cool animations that go alongside of this, I'm satisfied. All right, we come to it at last, the Warhammer Day reveal. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're looking for anything Age of Sigmar, this is the wrong channel for you. But as far as 40k goes, we did get some things that are kind of interesting, a little disappointing if I'm being honest. We were told that the Blood Angels were going to be the last big reveal for 40k as far as models go. So I wasn't really expecting too much for 40k, but I was still disappointed because I just want new models. 
The first thing that was revealed was five new battle forces that are coming around Christmas this year. These are the Dark Angels Inner Circle Task Force, the Imperial Knights Valor Strike Lance, the Necrons Hypercrypt Legion, the Adeptus Sororitas Penitent Crusader Host, and the Tau Empire Retaliation Cadre. None of these are new models that you already haven't seen, but they are new combinations of models for larger battle forces. These are just slightly bigger combat patrols, but they do have some pretty good models in them. The Dark Angels one even has Lionel Johnson in the Battle Force. After this, I feel like 40k is going to be pretty much done for the year. Now, this past Saturday was the release of the new Kill Team edition, Hive Storm. It came in a big Hive Storm box with terrain and both armies, the Tempestus Aquilons and the Vespid Stingwings. There were also individual Kill Teams released that were from last edition. But as if that wasn't enough, in this Warhammer Day reveal, there were some more Kill Team announcements. And the first set of new minis coming to Kill Team in this new edition is called Brutal and Cunning. On one side, you have the heavily armored Orc Rekka crew, but on the other, we have the resurgence, finally, of the Ratlings. For those that don't know, Ratlings are accepted ab humans within the Imperium that are essentially space hobbits. They are excellent reconnaissance men and snipers, and they love, love food. And all this release has done is solidify in my mind that Kill Team is consistently getting better models than the greater 40k game. They also showed us the kind of holiday model that's going to be coming called Provisionally Prepared. And it's got two ratlings that are simultaneously protecting the Imperium and filling their bellies. I don't know about you all, but I really, really enjoy the silly parts of 40k, and there's nothing sillier than orcs and ratlings. I don't play Kill Team at all, but I will be picking up those ratlings to do some type of kit bashing or scene with them. The last thing I want to talk about from this Warhammer Day reveal is kind of a surprise. I only really talk about 40k, I don't really delve into Heresy or Legions Imperialis. All I know about Legions is that it's even smaller guys fighting on a grander scale. But they announced some new stuff for Legions Imperialis that I think is a good sign for 40k or at least Horus Heresy. And that is the rise of the Dark Mechanicum. There is no Dark Mechanicum faction in the game of 40k. They're mentioned in a few books, but almost always as a Chaos Auxiliary. I'm hoping now that they're introducing parts of the Dark Mechanicum into Legions Imperialis that will bleed into the rest of Warhammer. The Mechanicum models for 40k are already pretty cool. I can imagine what the Dark ones would look like. And the kit bash potential would be crazy, I'm sure. So if this is something you want to see, keep using your voice. Make sure it's known that you like Dark Mechanicum. And then, of course, at the end of all this, before they were about to sign out, we got a brief flash of an Emperor's Children emblem. It has been long, long speculated that the next Primarch and next big faction release that's coming is the Emperor's Children and Fulgrim. The Third Legion and their Primarch have been active in the universe for a while now, ever since the Great Rift opened. But unlike Magnus or Angron or Mortarion, they haven't taken a lot of direct action against the Imperium. Well, we've gotten a couple of Emperor's Children books this year. We even got a Hammer and Bolter episode featuring them. So to me, this feels like something big in the narrative is about to happen. There are a couple of very new books that I have to catch up on, but there haven't been too many hints of the Emperor's Children and what they might be up to. Whatever it may be, we're going to have to wait till 2025 to figure it out. And last today, but certainly not least, is Golden Demon. I don't review a bunch of models yet, I'm still a very new painter myself, so I don't really have the expertise to judge other people's work, but I did want to talk about the Slayer Sword winner and then my favorite model. Golden Demon happens twice a year, once at Adepticon and once in Germany at Spielessen. This was the European leg of Golden Demon and it did not disappoint. The overall winner of Golden Demon, the best model out of any of them there, wins the Slayer Sword. And this year that went to David Perryman, aka Infernal Brush, for his version of Trug the Trogoth King. It was honestly a very beautiful rendition of that mini, and the base itself was crazy. It even has a very realistic water feature with fish in it. Not alive, mini. A very well-deserved trophy for a spectacular miniature. But my favorite model was the gold winner from the Diorama in Duel category. Urka did an incredible job capturing the bravado of a Space Wolf as he takes down a Tyranid. And having both miniatures supported by a complete resin base that's supposed to simulate water was ingenious. I'm nowhere close to this level of painting, but I am excited to go to Adepticon next year and see the entries then. That's going to about do it for this week's wrap up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next one.